It's Saturday, so y'all know y'all got the mailbag episode with the Cognac Boys. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Dante Foreman. Will he be able to take advantage of this opportunity that's right in front of him? And then we go into the mailbag and chop it up with y'all. Y'all already know. We're going to get right into it, plus a little bit more right after this. Now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. I'm Bobby. That's C-Dub. How you doing, my guy? I'm feeling great, man. I, you know how I love these mailbags, bro. Let's get it. Facts. If y'all like what y'all listening to today, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and tune in with the Chicago Bears Central family. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well. C-Dub, no uh, Roshan Johnson. Khalil Herbert is now on IR, out for the next four games. The man up now, your football next man up. Dante Foreman is here. He got to go ahead and make his presence felt. Do you think he'll be able to take advantage of this opportunity that's about to happen tomorrow? Tomorrow? Um, He better, man. I'm going to say, yeah, he better, man. Um, I didn't know this kid was in the league for six years. You know, on the on the season, he's uh five attempts for 16 yards at a 3.2 average clip with two receptions. Uh, but if you look at last year, he you know, he uh he had a pretty good season when it pertains to running backs these days and age, uh, at 203 attempts at 914 yards at 4.5 a carry, five TDs. Uh, but if you look at his previous four seasons, the the numbers ain't the same, but they kind of gradually go up after that first season with the Texans where he averaged 327. Uh, this is his chance to continue his momentum from last last season. Um, in the NFL, you always get your shot. You always get your shot, and I think this is Dante's shot to uh, show the Bears what he can bring to the table. Um, if I feel like he can do it, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, why not? He ain't I'm gonna got say, no other choice. I'm going <laughs> to say he don't got no choice, but I ain't going to – I'm going to go ahead and give him some respect and say, hey, I think tomorrow he's going to have a good game. I ain't okay. going to lie to you. I think he's going to have a good game. The offensive line is healthy. We got some good, solid pieces out there. You know what I'm saying? We are missing uh Braxton Jones, but nonetheless, the Bears was able to run the balls on the commander's D-line. Why shouldn't they be able to run it on the Minnesota Vikings D-line? That's just how I'm thinking. He just got to go out there and do what he know how to do. You've been being you being a running back your whole life, I imagine. So you got to go out here and take and seize the moment, live in the moment, and go ahead and put your name right back in that in that hat of the running backs for the Chicago Bears, especially because Khalil Herbert down for the next four weeks. So you got to go ahead and carry this mantle over until Roshan Johnson can come back and until yeah. Khalil Herbert reinserts himself within the line. So we got to go ahead and get this thing situated. Make sure you go out there and have a good game. Me personally, hey, nothing short under 75 yards, bro. Nothing yeah. short under 75 yards, bro. On, oh, bro. Hey, hey, hey. And look at this, Dante, as your chance to crack, to be the star of the running back. That's the way you should look at this. But in reality, you're just holding it down to Roshan get back. <laughs> for That's sure it. and i ain't mad at it you know what i'm saying just seize Get the moment bro seize yeah. the moment go out there do your thing i believe you gonna i believe you should be fine and i'm gonna I'm go and go off what you shown us last season didn't start off great this season found yourself being a healthy scratch is what they call it other than he saying hey, the man literally got benched <laughs> you know what he i'm saying but, play, gang. hey i, I done seen it plenty of times and across multiple sports players get benched they learn they 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 dissect yeah. everything, digest everything. They come back, and sometimes those players they come out firing. Let's make yeah. sure you got a loaded clip, my guy. Yeah, nephew, you ain't being sarcastic, is you? No, you I'm for him, real. You, you want him? To I succeed, want nephew. him. To, yes, that, that right. we need him to yeah, do his need, job. Yeah, do your we job. Also, That's all uh -huh. I can ask for. We also adding Darrington Evans. He he also is gonna be he gonna be a part of this game. He gonna get more snaps than he ever got. In the previous, uh, you know what I'm saying? So let's see what he does, too. But Dante, better take advantage, boy. Go listen to Eminem, He a bro. big guy. He talking he about his <laughs> arms are sweaty. Knee weak, <laughs> arms are heavy. You're bottom of the already. Mom's daddy, he's nervous. On road, what? 
Lose yourself. Hey, lose yourself, Dante Yo, Foreman. Bro. Let's go. I'm with you. Hey, I'm riding with you, my boy. Nothing under yeah. 75 yards to mine. I think he do him, bro. Don't make me look like no fool. The last guy that made me look like a fool ain't even in America no more. <laughs> 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 no, bro. But hey, hey, that's enough for us. Y'all know what time it is. It's Saturday. It's time to show y'all some love. The callers of this fantastic family. We the fantastic family, not the fantastic foe, the fantastic family. No, but bro. hey, what a better day to get the day started from a voicemail from Book. Book. Here it is. Yo, 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 Bobby C. Dub, this book, man, blessings to you and yours. Uh, two things. The first thing, I called Hayes, man, and left him a message, man, but I, I, I completely messed it up. I, uh, I said, uh, I got a Stretch Armstrong, uh, idea. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw the fishing line way out into the lake. I know we need a, another wide receiver. And I was thinking, you know, um, since, you know, weed is legal now, and that just used to be his problem. Why don't they take a look at Josh Gordon? You know, he's still playing. He's just in the XFL on the Seattle team. Just thinking, man, maybe give him a chance, bring him in, see how he work out, man. I mean, since, you know, we legal now and, you know, that was his issue, give him a chance, man. But like I said, you know, I'm just, that's, I'm just stretch Armstrong in right now. Man. I'm just trying, I'm just reaching right now. But, <laughs> you know, see, maybe, it, maybe it'll work out. Maybe that'll be his chance and he'll um, actually perform. Second thing, man, um, I just want to give some shout outs, man, um, to y'all because of the job y'all do. And, uh, you know, you, we really, and I would, I just only speak for myself, but I know, uh, you know, the appreciation that we have for what you guys do. Uh, Bobby on the, you know, with, with your insight on everything, man, you real cool, calm and collector, man. I like the way that you, how you, uh, break things down. C-Dub, man, you calling the games is still the funniest shit, man. I swear to God, man, because you, it, man, you need you need a network deal, man. I swear. Also, man, to, uh, Barry, Barry just funny, man. That dude, I I got to pull over sometimes when I'm working, man. He, when he talking, man, and everybody else that call in, you know, all of the Bears fans, the Chicago Bears itself, um, who else? Uh, Cache, you know, shout out to her, you know, first lady. You know, she she needs a voiceover job doing something. But uh, that's all I wanted to say, man. Uh, Chicago up, bear down, and I'll holler at y'all soon, man. Peace. Shout out to Book. Hey, Book, I've been trying to get C-Dub a network deal going on two seasons. <laughs> hey, let's let's band together, locking arms, Chicago Bears fans. If you love C-Dub, the way y'all say y'all do when he live call the game, let's get him up in there. Let's get him up in there. <laughs> Let's send these crazy. clips and tag Chicago Bears on Twitter. Somebody got to find my man. <laughs> Somebody got to find. He's still running. I know that's one of y'all favorite. <laughs> DJ Moore. Oh, my God. What about when C-Dub break his headphones? You see, he ain't even got the old headphones because he broke too many of <laughs> C-Dub, take it away. <laughs> Bro. Shout real. out to my man, Book, man. We return to love as, as, as well, man. This is all a family. We all come together in support of our favorite team, the Chicago Bears. You know this, this city is a Chicago Bears town, even before them ragged-ass Cubs. Well, anyway, thanks for the love. Um, When it comes to this guy, uh, Josh Gordon, Fla jo Josh Gordon, or the uh, – I do I do like the point that uh we need to change the profile. I think we all got the we got the same kind of profile receiver. I think they all similar. They look fast, agile, fast switch receivers like Tyler Scott, DJ Moore, Darnell Mooney. They all the same. That is one difference in EQ, but now he's hurt. Uh I would want to get a big possessing receiver like and liken to Chase Claypool and Gordon. But not Gordon, bro, because it's just it's just you can't beat yourself in the face too many times. Okay. He, can't, <laughs> he can't stay off. He can't, you know what I'm saying? He might come high one day and then you know what I'm saying? Get on the wrong bus or something and go the wrong way on Lakeshore Drive or something. He just high all the time. We can't deal with it, bro. We can't. Facts. No I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> hey, I did like Josh Gordon when he came in the league, man. He was he yeah. was a monster in Cleveland. Monster. But he yeah. couldn't stay off the weed. <laughs> but what if he go and he order you some, one of your favorite fast food restaurants and he say, hey, 
Your fool bagged up. He say, hey, can I get it to go tray? Bro, your fool in the bag, in the tray. What you talking about? <laughs> you mean a cup holder, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and I think that, I think Ryan Poe's and them going to stay away from him just because they talk yeah. about character. And this yeah. guy got too many, you know, dinks on his on his hood. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just too bad. Yeah, they looked at Chase. I know y'all probably looking at Chase Capel and he had dinks in his hood as well, as nephew say. But not again. I think they learned their lesson. They ain't doing that <laughs> shit again. <laughs> but shout out to you, Book, and shout out to all the people you showed appreciation to because we really appreciate y'all Book. too, man. And you definitely been one of the 30. 30. Flex is in the chat for my man, Book. Y'all Book. already know. But hey, we move on. I got my country cousin from the A up in our building. <laughs> Here's Bro. the voicemail from Marcellus. Marcellus. What's up, fam? Hey, Bobby, C Dub, Steve O, Big Care, how y'all feeling? It's a country cousin from the A. Marcellus, man. I know I ain't caught in in a few weeks. That that last preseason game and that first game against Green Bay had me reeling. I ain't gonna lie to you. And I try not to overreact. But this is how I'm feeling right now. Basically a third of the season about over with. We should win this game this week against Minnesota. Especially now that Jefferson is ruled out. Um, We're going to get to see Dante Foreman for the first time in live action. Hopefully they've been got things sitting in man for a reason. He's coming in fresh, ready to roll. Uh, hopefully Roshan come out of injury, uh, concussion pro- protocol, and, and he's ready to roll. If not, I'm expecting to see him next week. The next five games, we should be in there. We should be in there for real. Now I know I had us in like 13 wins from the from the get go. We can still get 10 wins and got name. The division is still on the line. Playoffs is still in, in still in reach. So you know, hey, just want everybody to temp. We had to temper our expectations, y'all. We let a Detroit Lion quarterback hype us up. That's what that's what happened. We let Dan Olowski hype us all up, get our expectations all up in the bunch. And now that, you know what I'm saying, the league done pulled out the first four weeks, be a dude. You never know what's going to happen on the first four weeks. But going into these, this next stretch of games, I think we're sitting pretty good. The only thing I'm really worried about is the Chargers. For real. Other, outside of them, shit. We took our lump to KC. And, and, and Denver, we should have had Denver, but you know what? We ain't going to cry with spilled milk. You know what I'm saying? Just, just uh, everybody keep an optimistic uh, head going into these next few games. It should be all right. Continue to support the game. Continue to support the team. Love y'all. Chicago up. Bear down. Shout out to my country cousin from the A, C Dub. Take it away. And I can't wait till you get on this, uh, nephew. Uh, shout out my man from the A out there. Um, you are absolutely right, bro. Um, we we did kind of get pumped up. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a uh mold it like this. I used to break the the most people, but I used to break down the uh season into uh four quarters, but we did add the extra game, so you can't really go four quarters, but let's do it like this. Uh the first uh quarter of the season, we got beat up, man. We got our ass whooped, bro. We took a lot of punches, but we didn't go down, bro. We fought back in that last game of the first quarter of the season. We fought back, but we still got a knockdown. It ain't a knockout, it's a knockdown. But 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 we put some licks on them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We put them licks on them. They feel us now. Now the start of the the um the second quarter, we on the positive side. We got a knockdown. We got a win against the uh, Washington Commanders. Now we on to the next phase. We got three more games in this quarter. Can you get another knockdown against the Minnesota Vikings? I can't wait to nephew come in and tell and tell you what we've been talking about. I think he's going to talk about it right now. But it is some optimism. If you look at Justin Fields, his numbers is that it's the same as the top quarterbacks in the league. That ain't me just being a Chicago Bears fan. That's just the fact. Go and look at his QBR. Go look at the touchdowns. Go look at the interceptions. 
and the passing yards, which he has more than Khalil Herbert. Um, no, Justin Herbert, the, Justin Herbert, <laughs> Justin Herbert. I'm sorry. What's the kid? Lamar Jackson, uh, and Patrick Mahomes. I might be wrong about Patrick Mahomes, but go yeah, check. I the think stats. Pat Mahomes got a little bit more. Go check the stats. Um, but this is a this is a, this gonna be a 12 round fight. Well, you could, this is gonna be a 17 round fight, young bro. That's and, a long and, fight. <laughs> it's gonna be a 17 round fight, and uh, the Bears have just started to get into the fight. They just started to get to the fight, and the fight is not over. Oh, bro. That's that's right. And I think it's man, look, if we just right now, like look, after the Green Bay game, and then the especially the bus game, I said, Hey, we just gotta tip our expectations. I hope and I said they gotta get slapped around a little bit more. Hey, they got open hand smacked by KC. Yes. And then yes. they fought, they fought back against the Denver Broncos, and Denver Broncos said, Oh, y'all thought it was sweet. Boom! And not <laughs> dude down, put a oh. knot on his head. He went to Nottingham and he had a planet on his head. Now we put a little ice, or, you know what I'm saying? So a little broccoli, some cold broccoli on our head, some frozen yeah. fruit or ve veggies, whatever you want to put on that. And the knot went down a little bit, but it's still there. But the Bears got opportunity. And I think it just, you, it, they got to take it one game at a time, man. And that's really how we need to look at this. They got opportunity to look at the Minnesota Vikings. They got a division game. It's going to be closer than what we think it is, regardless of Justin Jefferson is in the game or not. It's still yeah. a division game. Everybody knows everybody from all these years. They know what the Bears are going to do. We know what they're going to do. Now it's all about wants. Who wants to win more? Yeah. And the Bears got to show up. And if you think that Kirk Cousins, like C-Dub, been reiterating all week, if you think Kirk Cousins is going to come lay down because J.J. ain't out there, you're going to be fooled and you will be going home with an L. So the Bears need to be focused on this game. We'll worry about Las Vegas Raiders next week. On, Focus on the now. That's how we got to do it. We can't look we look ahead with the track record of the Chicago Bears now. I will say this before we move on, C-Dub. The Bears snap the 14-game winning streak. I mean, losing streak. Losing. They snap it. Boom. They still haven't snapped that home game losing streak. They have Go not. give something to the fans like us to cheer for. They deserve it, especially if they spend two, three hundred dollars for a ticket. Yep. Go make it right for the fans. We're going to leave yep. it at that. Perfectly said on, bro. Damn, we ain't even think about that, neither, nephew. Bro, Earth. it's crazy. It's crazy. But, hey, we keep chugging along. Now we got my man Darius. Hey, Darius, I'm going to just say this, bro. In Chicago, we don't say people full names. If your name Daryl, we call you Daryl. Your name Darius in Chicago, we're gonna call you Des. <laughs> <laughs> D thing. <laughs> um, bro. <laughs> Here's your voicemail, my guy. What's going on, guys? Darius from Dallas here, man. I had to call in. I'm so sick of fucking arguing with these dumbass Bears fans on social media. We got to have a stupidest fucking fan base. I, and I thought it was bad living here in Dallas with all the cowboy fans, but I, I'm starting to feel like Chicago media and Chicago fans are worse because it's the, the shit i'm okay let me just vent real quick just hear me out i don't feel like the criticism of justin is completely fair that we're getting on with, with these bears fans and i feel like everybody is missing the point of view that needs to be looked at with this he's a hell of a fucking quarterback has he frustrated me at times this year yes you bet you. but people are downplaying how hard it is to have a certain skill set and a certain strength and have coordinators call the complete opposite of what you do, what you do best. That's like if we took Tom Brady and take, a, take Tom Brady in his prime, and let's put him in Lamar Jackson's offensive scheme. Let's make him run the same plays that Lamar Jackson did. That, that's exactly what this is like. That's exactly what that's like. Well, Tom Brady would look fucking terrible in Baltimore's system. Is that because Tom Brady sucks? No, he's the greatest quarterback of all time. But you're going to put him in a situation where he's got to do a lot of read option, a lot of rollouts, and use his legs, he's not going to be good. So I don't understand. And if that were to happen, everybody would obviously say, oh, it's the system. Okay, so why is it that it's so hard for us to look at Justin Fields and realize, hey, they weren't calling the right plays to fit him. You see what happens when they did. So I don't understand what all the criticism and all that shit is. And I – after the last couple of games, I'm sold on Justin. Now, because I've seen that it's definitely the fucking play call. It's definitely the fucking play call. I was a little on the fence for the first couple of games, if it was or not. 
It's definitely the fucking play call. This kid's got talent. This kid's got talent. So Bears fans, shut the fuck up and stop all this hopping on and hopping off the fucking bandwagon. All right? And when the team is losing, yes, let's put all the pressure in the world on the fucking organization. But they're winning. Okay, why are we still being negative on fucking social media, man? Why are we still talking about getting rid of Justin and trading him? This is ridiculous. Like, I'd rather deal with fucking Cowboy fan. God damn, dude. Y'all chill the fuck out and just enjoy the season and support our quarterback. Good Lord. Texas up, they're down. Fuck. Good Lord. Hold on. Woo! 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 Ooh, you was man. in there cooking up a, a filet mignon, oh, bro, medium. If you get a well-done steak, you're wrong. I'm just letting you know right now. If you take your girl and she sit there and say, I want my steak well done, you better say, uh-uh, baby, we ain't doing that. We're going to get a medium steak. It's going to come out. It's going to be right, especially if you're getting a filet mignon. You was in there cooking. And I would say this real quick, and then I let Steve, uh, Steve-O ain't here. I let C-Dub do his thing. First of all, look, Bears fans, we do be overreacting. But there's Darius. The Packers fans just said that Jordan Love was a Hall of Famer after week one. <laughs> 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 so, dude, we bad, but we ain't that bad. But I do agree with you. We do need to chill. Look, the national media has to stir up the pot. So they're going to say even after two great weeks of Justin Fields, they're going to say, you can't go into the next season with this guy. Why can't you? Oh, because you need to reset your rookie clock. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? And with our track record, y'all think we should go ahead and wash everybody out, including the quarterback, go get Caleb Williams, and then see what we can do? Y'all think DJ Moore going to like that? Y'all think Darnell Mooney going to like that? Mm. What about them running backs or the offensive line that's going to war for the man that's throwing the ball? Let's wait to the end of the season and evaluate the season before we make a decision. That's all I'm asking. C-Dub, take it away. Okay. Let me just give you guys the numbers again. Justin Fields, in this season, even with the horrible, horrible start that everybody's talking about, is completing passes, 62% of his passes, 1,143 yards, 11 touchdowns, which is, I think, second in the NFL now, if not tied for first, and five interception with a QBR of 95. Um, This kid is playing in the most intense pressure that I've seen a, a Chicago Bears quarterback Bro, I, I, since I've been watching the Bears, even more than he Jay Color, crazy, even way more than Justin Color. You don't know why he got the media criticizing his every move, yep. his every freaking move. And you know what it all boils down to? Caleb Williams. We think he, I, I think Caleb Williams is good. I think Caleb Williams is going to be a good quarterback coming to the NFL. But what if he's not? Did anybody ever come to that realization? What if he's not good? But I can tell you right now, Justin Fields is, an, is, is playing like an elite quarterback right now. If you look at his numbers. Ever since the kids say, I'm going to play the way I play and be loose. He's done exactly that and thrown nine touchdowns and two interceptions. Give mm. the kid a chance. He's going through tremendous pressure already from outside noise. Uh, it is so sad that uh, so-called Chicago Bears fans are adding on to the to the to the pressure. It's just ridiculous. Look at the game and stop. Stop. It's not Christmas. Stop wanting and wanting. You already got it in your face. Take what you got in your face. Facts. 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 I ain't got nothing. Oh, yeah, last point, Darius. Great analogy with the scheme with Tom Brady because Tom Brady cannot run an offense like Lamar Jackson. That is not Tom's Brady game. So shout out to you for that. And shout out to you again for being a Bears friend in Dallas. <laughs> for oh. real. Shout out to you. But, hey, we got you two. You know he got though. a security system with cameras Facts. off. <laughs> Facts. But we keep moving, man. This next one here is from Tyrese. Cognac boys, what's good, man? It's Tyrese, man. I got some good news and some bad news. Good news is we don't need no quarterback. Bad news is we're going to get the number one 
overall draft pick and we're going to trade it back. Now, my prediction is we're going to trade that first round pick. I mean, that number one overall pick. We're going to trade it back, but we're not going to trade up out of the top five. I'm thinking that we're going to trade it back to about three. We're going to get a little bit more than what we, what, what, what we desire or whatever. And we're not going to get Marvin Harrison and, Jer- and Jared Burst like we would want to. But we will get one of those players. And I'm saying that the Bears, we're going to end up with a late round, first round pick because we're going to go on a roll, baby. We, I, I, like I said, I'm still optimistic. So we're going to have a late round pick. But in that first round, we're going to end up getting Marvin Harrison Jr. And we're going to end up missing out on the best edge rusher up in the draft. But with our late round pick, I feel like we should go for either a left tackle to replace Braxton Jones and make him our swing tackle. And in the second round, we're going to go get us a um, center because we're going to get two picks in the second round because then whoever wants that first round pick is going to have to give up their first round pick. This is going to be the third pick and their second round pick and another first for next year. And we're going to go get us a starting center, starting left tackle, and Marvin Harrison Jr. So I'm sorry, Mr. Hayes. We're not going to be able to get Burt and Harrison, but we will get one of those players. And since I'm calling in on a Friday, I'm going to give you a bold prediction for this coming up Sunday. Chicago Bears will beat the Minnesota Vikings by at least two touchdowns. Mm. And Justin Fields will go for another four piece in the TD area for zero pick because he's still going to be cooking. And you know how we did when we came up out of that mini by, mini by last year? Could have been even worse. We are just hope, I'm just hoping that we can bring in somebody with a defensive mind frame that's way better than Coach Mag Ruff. He was loose and took off putting some pressure down because Javon Dexter. Even though people talk about he was slow about his whatever, he can't reach whatever, Javon Dexter is playing out of his freaking mind. And if we keep that boy doing what he's doing, get rid of Justin Jones and bring in, bring like that rookie seven round pick from Kennesaw, yo, let Jack Pickens and um, Dexter do their thing and let that boy, you know, start kicking himself. Oh, man, we could have agreed. You know, because it was. Oh, Tyrese, you kind of went out there at the end, but I definitely catch your drift. See, Dub, go ahead. Uh, shout out to Tyrese. Um, we definitely don't need uh Caleb Williams on this team. I'm definitely on that bus. And uh, when it comes to the first round, first pick, as long as we get Marvin Heverson Jr., I don't care what the hell it is. I don't, I don't <laughs> care if you trade down as long as you get this kid. We need to add him to the Chicago. We haven't had two outstanding receivers on the same team in a long time maybe brandon marshall uh, sean jeffrey Musa mohammed and and bernard barian if you want to go back mm-hmm. some more but this will be way yeah. better than that. so yeah. i so shout out to my man therese bro you went crazy Oh, the real definitely went crazy. I, I'm gonna chime in on that too. Hey, Marvin Harrison Jr. should be a go, and I'm with you. And C Dub, we talked about it offline. Hey, if you trade the pick, don't trade yourself so far back to where you can't snag this great wide receiver. I believe the wide receiver game translates better, a little bit better than the quarterback. I know it could be debatable, but I would say wide receivers they typically flow in a little bit better than most quarterbacks. It's still to be determined on what Caleb Williams will look like and Marvin Harrison Jr. will look like. I will put that out there. And your bold prediction that the Bears win by two touchdowns? Man, that'll be great. And Justin Fields throw another four touchdowns? Hold on. That'll be a – I think he already got the Bears record for four, for two for two games with four touchdowns. I think that's already a record. Y'all let me know down below. But if he do it for three, three what? games in a row? Oh, Lord, look out. <laughs> Oh, Lord, look out. That'd be crazy. I can't wait to hit a media after that if he does that. Oh, Oh, no, real. You still got to trade him. You still got to trade him. It's just the Vikings now. (laughs) Right. Now it's just the Vikings, I guess. But, hey, we got this last voicemail. This one is from Pablo. Pablo. Yo, yo, Bobby, speed up. Hey, Steve-O, Cognac Boys, what's the word, man? Your boy, Boss Pablo. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
we still riding off the head our first dub of the, of the year. You know what I'm saying? I just want to call and chime in and, you know what I'm saying, see where y'all at with it. Hey, big game coming up, guys. Big game coming up. Let's handle the biz. Let's handle the biz. I got a chance to watch some of the All-22. And, man, I tell you what, I'm extremely excited about Zach Pickens and Devon. I mean, I'm sorry, Dexter. Big Dex, yeah, yeah, yeah. Javon, uh, Dex, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Dex, hey, that boy's a real problem, man. Them boys was causing havoc up front all night long. I know y'all seen them, uh, hit Sam Howe with that little, uh, 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 that little, that little pancake, that little ham sandwich they hit him with. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, still riding on the high, man. We gotta go handle business. We got the Vikings, no Jetta. You know what I'm saying? Kirk Cousins, I'm, I'm, I, look, we already had this discussion um, last year. Y'all clown me when I said Kirk Cousins is going to always be a top 10 quarterback. Y'all clown me. But, I mean, let's keep it real. The numbers speak for itself, man. If, if you just go down a 10-year span or however long he's been in the league, just look at his numbers. Dude is one of them ones that you, you put on a good team with a good line, a good D, maybe one or two receivers. And he could lead them to the promised land. So I tell you what, we got to attack Kirk Cousins early and often, man. We got to get him out the game. I'm looking for uh uh uh, I'm looking for Mooney to have a a big game. You know what I'm saying? He been you know in the shadows and DJ Moore been getting all the shine, but I'm I'm looking for Mooney to go off, man. I'm taking him for any time study. That's for sure, for sure. Uh, Dante Foreman, this your time to shine, my boy. Let's do it. I'm hoping Roshan. It's ready to go. If Roshan ready to go, then cool. But uh, Foreman, let's get it, my boy. Y'all already know what's going down, man. Chicago up. Let the fuck down. Shout out to Pablo real quick. Hey, Javon Dexter. Hey, they say he couldn't get off the ball, but I know one thing that you can't coach. You can't coach speed. You can't coach power. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> I'll leave it at that. You can't coach power, gang. You can go ahead and lift out, lift the weight. But you ever seen one of them old school guys come to the basketball court and just move all the young bucks out the way because he got that old man strength? That's the guy, old man scrimp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, hey, great take, man, Pablo. Hey, if I clowned you, my B, because I do understand Kirk, Kirk Cousins, he ain't, hey, you can't overlook this guy this Sunday, bro. Tomorrow, you cannot overlook this guy. But go ahead, c Doug. Oh, yeah, you are exactly right with that, Vikings. We did clown him, but it was more like in the big moments of big games, Kirk Cousins, he does come up short a lot. That's all we're saying. But he will light your ass up until then. That is Kirk Cousins, bro. He's leading the league in touchdowns right now with 13. Yep. So um, he is a threat even without Justin Jefferson. The Bears better have their antennas up. And when they come to them two young kids, we see, I I know I'm going to say it. I'm going to speak for myself. I think the rest of us said as well that those kids, those that's the future of the um, defensive tackles. We love it. They get more and more playing time on the defensive line together. I think they are the future. They learn in every step of the way. And uh Javante, they uh they um Javon Dexter. Devon Dexter. This man is big for no damn reason. My <laughs> homie just moved him into his new house and took a picture next to the next side of him. My homie is six foot two, two hundred pounds. He looked like a little kid standing next to him. <laughs> bro, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I'm like, damn, he just do this so young. And so that's the future. And uh, I definitely agree with you, Pablo. On um, bro. Pablo. Sure. But that's it from us today, man. We appreciate y'all for tuning in on another great mailbag on a Saturday. Now y'all can go ahead and tune in to the rest of your day. C-Dub, you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Man. All right. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel before you get up out of here. And, hey, we going to catch y'all tomorrow. Flash out. <laughs> Boss, it's your last call. Two in a row, nigga. Let's go. <laughs>